Morning folks, I got an email. I got an email from somebody with some good questions and I want to share I want to take this time to actually answer this lady's questions and I'm gonna share them with everybody else because I think they're important questions. And her name is Kendall and when I come back I'm gonna answer her questions. Hey Hello there. Hi Don, I loved your recent video on that Quinka High Life article on when expats should go home. Once I move, I don't plan to go back to the US. I certainly wouldn't move back just so I can die there. So I had a thought on a topic for a video and I thought I'd drop you a line. I know you don't like to talk politics. Boy, this is a woman after my own heart. Yeah, you're damn right. I don't like to talk politics. I don't like to talk politics. I don't like to talk sports. I don't like to talk vaccinations, policies, left, right, you know, Democratic, Republican, I don't care about all that crap. You know, I don't understand why people want to live their lives talking about that stuff. It just gets everybody upset, angry, mad, pissed off, fighting. People get shot over stuff like this. I lost a good friend here because they wanted to lie about something as an excuse for not getting vaccinated. Blah, blah, blah. Here we go. So, you're right. We're not talking politics on this channel. <laughs> uh, I, know, I know I've seen posts on how to register to vote on Gringo Post, but I think it would be great to bring that information to the attention of your viewers. I have some information about posts, you know, about voting, remote voting. I actually did a little research this morning. I found a website. And it's called, and I put a link to it in the description. I, and I, since some of you don't have access to the description, I'll put a link here. Here it is, right here. Pause the video and write this link down. If you're on a computer or a laptop, you can just, you know, follow the link in the description. And you won't have any trouble getting to the link. But anyway, it's a government website, FVAP, Federal Voting Assistance Program. And that's a good place to start. I didn't vote last year, I'm sorry to say. After I moved here, I, it just, that was just the furthest from my mind. But I do plan to vote this year. And I'm going to start with FVAP, F, FVAP.gov. And the link to that I just shared with you. It's an online, no cost to you website provided by the US government that provides you with everything you need for absentee voting. That's the way I would do it, okay? So, again, here's the link right here. Write it down, okay? Or if you're on a computer, it's in the description down below, okay? So, I also wonder if expats are allowed or required to vote in Ecuadorian elections. Only if you're a citizen here. If, once you get your, your permanent residency and you got your sedula and you become an Ecuadorian citizen, you will be required to vote in the Ecuadorian elections. You can still vote in the United States, too. I thought I heard something about that, but I thought you might have a resource that could provide accurate information on it. If you have any questions about it, you know, I'll put a link to um, Marco's website, Equisys. He's a good attorney here, and he can give you all the details that you can possibly want on requirements for voting in Ecuador. Just a thought, she says. Also, I was wondering about your experience with the healthcare system. There's the subject again. <laughs> Uh, with you, w with your COVID diagnosis. Okay, when I got sick here last month, I, I, I knew, you know, I felt like I had a flu coming on. I felt like typical flu symptoms. I thought, well, okay, it's just another, you know, flu. But when I developed fever, then I started having some concern. And so I called my doctor. I actually emailed or I sent her a message on WhatsApp and to Dr. Garcia, and I said, Sup, Dr. Garcia? 
Well, they actually didn't say it that way. But I greeted her, and she responded to me right away, and I told her, I said, I have flu-like symptoms, and I have fever, and I have a bad cough. I feel horrible. What should I do? She asked me if I wanted to get a COVID test. I said, yes, I do. I might as well. She sent me, she said, do you want to go somewhere and get it tested, or do you want them to come to you? And I said, I want them to come to me. So she took care of all the arrangements. Next thing you know, on my door, there's a lab. It's a lab technician with all the stuff in his little skinny thing, stuck it up in the felt the back of my skull with this little probe. That night, I got an email, and I tested positive and got my results, tested positive. That's how I knew I had COVID. I told, and then of course Dr. Garcia found out immediately too, and then she prescribed a treatment plan for me. Simple as that, okay? And if memory serves me, the last time you talked about seeing a doctor, you said you just contacted him or her using WhatsApp. You're right, but it, there's a little bit more to it than that, okay? I, I, the way I found her in the first place, I found her on Facebook. I, I tell everybody when you come here, the first thing you should do when you come here, whether you like Facebook or not, I don't care. Get on Facebook and join Mark Bradbury's Facebook page. He's got over 5,000 members. These are all people that live or have lived or used to live. Some are dead. Some are still alive. Some of them I question. And, you know, th there's so much information on his page. I'll put a link to it in the description. Here it is right here, okay, but I'll put a link to it in the description. Mark Bradbury's Friends and Amigos page for Mana B, all right? That's the first place you go to get information when you come here, unless you just know people. There's so much information on his page, and that's where you find doctors, mechanics, lawyers, places to eat, friends, people to meet, you know? Hookers, whatever you want, you know, you can find them on Facebook. I'm not saying you're going to find hookers on Mark Bradbury's. Well, that's actually, you will, because what will happen is once you get on that page, you're going to start getting all kinds of, especially if you're a single guy like me, you're going to start getting all kinds of solicitations for friendship from little senioritas, and they're in business. But anyway, beside the point, I know. I, I found out about Dr. Garcia from his page. That's how I found the doctor in the first place. And most of these doctors that advertise or allow people to publish their information on Facebook provide their WhatsApp number. And folks, it's very common here. Don't be shy about sending a WhatsApp message to a doctor that you, somebody's referred to you. Don't be shy about it. I've, I've met people here that said, I don't want to bother him, you know? Well, how else are you going to get in touch with them? You're not in the United States. You don't have to call a toll-free number and talk to a robo-voice, robo-system, you know, and explain what insurance you have and then hope that you can get an appointment. Here, you can contact your doctor on WhatsApp and say, Doctor, I need your help, please. I, I got your number from Facebook or from Don Shader or from whoever, and you can contact them. All right, and they'll be happy to talk to you. That's how I found Dr. Garcia. I was, I, actually, I was broke my little toe, and somebody gave me her number. I contacted her on WhatsApp. She responded immediately and told me she could be here at my apartment at such and such a time during that day. <clears throat> and sure enough, <clears throat> there's that frog again. Rabbit. I couldn't get this frog out of my throat. But anyway, she will sh show up. And, and most of these doctors, a lot of these doctors will make house calls. Not all of them do. You can save yourself 20 bucks on the visit if you go to their office. Because the typical office visit around here is 40 bucks. A house call is $60 for most doctors, okay? So, she, Kendall continued to say, I don't remember if that was when you were still on IESS. What insurance plan you're on has nothing to do, nothing to do with being able to get a hold of your doctor. You can contact any doctor you want. Now, if you're on an insurance plan, and if you're on a network, then of course then you have to contact your insurance agent and find out who to contact.
But I'm telling you folks, when you're here and you need a doctor, you need help right now, get on the Facebook page, find a doctor, contact me, I'll give you a doctor, I'll give you a phone number. I know several different types of doctors around here, heart specialists, allergy, dermatologists, general practice, podiatrists, orthopedic surgeon. I know all of these doctors, okay? You contact me and I'll hook you up, okay? But if you can't get me or I'm in a bad mood and don't want to deal with you, then get on Facebook. And you'll, believe me, you'll, on Mark Bradbury's Facebook page, you get all the information you need. Then You don't have to be in an insurance plan to WhatsApp a doctor, okay? I hope that answers your question. Next time you discuss health care, perhaps you could explain how you went about getting the medical attention you needed, obviously without discussing your health details. Did you just contact the doc using WhatsApp? Is there an equivalent to urgent care clinics? I'm especially concerned about this during my exploratory visit. So I just answered most of that in the previous comment, but what I didn't answer is the equivalency to an urgent care. Yes, here in Monta, okay, in Monta here where I live, in the mall, Mall Del Pacifico, there is a clinic there. It costs like 35 bucks to get in there. They do everything there. <clears throat> you need blood work done, x-rays. I understand there's even dental help in there, but I'm not, can't confirm that yet. Anything, it's like an urgent care. They don't call them urgent care here. It's a, med it's a medical clinic. It's in the mall, right across from Fibeca. They take your credit cards, they take cash, of course. You'll see a doctor right away, and it'll probably be an English-speaking doctor, too. The first initial nurse you might see may, may not, you know, but the doctor, every doctor that I've seen in there spoke English well enough that I could communicate with them. So yes, then to, if you're coming to Monta, and and there's a there's a clinic in every major city, okay, whether it's Quito, <clears throat> you know Cuenca, you know the big, Bill Obama, I believe, Loja, uh, but they are here. That you definitely will find an urgent care, okay. I'm also curious how one accesses a doctor when you're new to Ecuador. Like I just said, Facebook, WhatsApp, okay. Uh, as you know, here in the U.S., you first have to contact the doctor's office to ask them if they're even accepting new patients. Yeah, and you got to do more than that. Hey, you, before you even get to talk to a nurse or a doctor, you got to explain your insurance. You got to, well, yeah, first insurance, 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 insurance. You can tell them I'm paying cash, and they'll say, okay, uh, well, who's your insurance? You know, it's ridiculous. The, the medical, the healthcare system in the United States is a pathetic state. I don't recommend them, folks. Go somewhere else, like Ecuador, Colombia. There's man, healthcare in South America is just amazing. Kendall goes on to say, about a month ago, I developed a hernia, and it was a real pain just to get an appointment to see my primary care doc. I couldn't help but think it would be a lot easier to get your doctor's attention in Ecuador, since you don't have to go through an online portal or call a scheduling department. You see. Here's the thing, they don't have online portals here. <laughs> Back to my original answer, Facebook, WhatsApp, in that order. Or Don Shader, and then WhatsApp. I'll give you all the help I can give you, okay? And you don't have to pay me. One last thought. Have you considered adding your email to your closing credits? I know you said you put it in the description, but I rarely watch YouTube on a computer or tablet. Yeah, I, you know, folks, I, 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 I'll do that. I'll put my email address at the beginning of the video, and I'll put it at the end. Most people don't watch these videos to the end anyway. A lot of people don't realize that if you watch my videos all the way to the end, that you might see a little bonus clip of some type at the end. Most people that know me know that I'm a big TikTok fan, and I collect TikTok videos, and I share them with people. As long as they don't have music on them, so I don't get pinged for violating somebody's copyright act. But I'll put it in the credits because you asked for it, Kendall. I I get lots of spam email, and you know sometimes I wonder if it's even wise to even put out my email address. 
I used to have my WhatsApp number, and I found out real fast that that was a big mistake. You know, I'm not a big-time YouTuber. I only have a little over 50, 5,000, 5,100 subscribers, but I know other YouTubers that have a hell of a lot more, and at one point they had absolutely no privacy whatsoever. And so you can probably imagine why. I'll put my email address. I'll put it uh, in the beginning of the video, and I'll put it in the credits, somewhere in the credits. Maybe I'll just put it throughout the video. I'll figure out some way to get it out there. But I'm telling you, folks, if it becomes a problem, I'm going to have to just not publish it and and just force people have to use the comment section. I, I hate that. I don't like that idea at all. I want you to be able to reach me when you need me. Okay? So anyway, that's it. Thanks for the, all your videos. I'm always looking forward to the next one. Kendall. Thanks, Kendall. I appreciate it. I thought I would just do this video for you and, 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 and let it, other people benefit from it. Hope you don't mind me using your name. I didn't give you last name, so you shouldn't have problems with that. You mentioned Gringo Post, and I don't really subscribe to Gringo Post much. I, Gringo Post is a Cuenca thing, and somebody jokingly told me in Cuenca that the best place in the world to get Gringo is on Gringo Post. I don't know if that's true. I'm not saying that. I'm just telling you what somebody told me. But anyway... That's it for today. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Ciao, ciao. Have anybody seen my edible that was in my purse on the island? No. Nope, nope, nope.